Good day, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, once again, we are back together uh, looking at question nine uh, from the May, June 2021 paper. Uh, just look, it's uh, actually a DBE paper. Um, so if you haven't subscribed, please just make sure that you are part of the family. Okay, and uh, please don't forget even that notification bell so that you are notified every time that we post new lessons. Right, uh, and uh, for those of you who may need assistance with mathematics or physical science, please just get in touch with us and our email address is simply info at mlungisingosi dot co dot z a all right now let's have a look at this question it's on electrodynamics okay motors and generators so they say that uh, in the diagram below uh, is a simplified representation um, of an ac generator the coil is rotated in a clockwise direction in the magnetic field okay now they say first of all write down um, the name of component x Okay, you can see our component X there. Those are our slip rings. Okay, these are the guys that uh, make sure uh, that, you know, current, uh, um, you know, is, or rather this thing is an AC generator. It's moving in, 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 in half cycles. Okay, so um, the component, uh, f uh, the function rather of component Y, those are called brushes. Okay, they uh, ensure that there is electrical uh, connectivity or in this case, they ensure that current is able to flow uh, through the armature, right? Okay, and um, uh, in this case, they say uh, use the relevant principles to explain why an EMF is induced in the coil when the coil is rotated in the magnetic field. Okay, so uh, just to remind yourself there, uh, that remember this is basically uh, an explanation of uh, Faraday's law which simply states that uh, the EMF is induced uh, because there is a change or uh, uh, it's directly proportional to the rate of change in magnetic flux. So in this case the moment that we have a rotation okay when it rotates in the magnetic field uh, in this case there is a change in the magnetic flux which ultimately induces the current okay right so uh, the next question uh, they say the coil rotates clockwise okay so we're gonna have to use our uh, hands there they say it rotates clockwise uh, from the position uh, in the diagram okay um, yeah from the position shown in the diagram they say in which direction will uh, current be induced in segment PQ of the coil. Now, for those of you who have not really seen me, uh, you know, explain this, uh, please just go back to our full video on electrostatics. OK, uh, and not electrostatics, rather electrodynamics. Um, it will really, really assist you in, us, in, in, in understanding this section. So uh, remember, this is an AC generator, which means, remember, for a generator, we use the right hand, okay? So meaning that now, remember, we said our thumb shows us the direction of rotation, okay? Uh, our forefinger, the first one here, shows us the direction of the field, and you can see there's our north and south, so it means the field direction is in that direction. And we said that the, the middle finger, the second finger, shows us the direction of the current, right? So in this case, uh, there's my right hand. I know there's my uh, field. Okay, they told me that it's rotating clockwise. So on segment PQ, this is moving upwards. So there's my field. So it means that my current should be moving uh, from P to Q. All right, so I hope you understood that. We place them at right hand to each other. There's the direction of rotation. There's the direction of the field and therefore the current is moving in that direction. Remember that for generators, we use the right hand, uh, the, the right hand rule. All right. Now the next question says, um, they say the output voltage uh, uh, versus time graph obtained for, uh, from the above generator, uh, for the above generator rather. Okay. So we can see they've given us a maximum voltage there. Okay. That's our maximum value. And they say the output of the uh, uh, is generated rather the frequency of 50 hertz. Okay. Now they say to us calculate the time t 
indicated in the above graph. Now remember, we know that frequency, okay, so frequency is 1 over period, or we can simply say it means that period would actually be 1 over the frequency. Now what you need to keep in mind is that this period that we are calculating is the period to actually complete one full cycle. It's the time that it takes to complete one full cycle. What's a full cycle? That's one and so that's one up and one down. That's a full cycle. So we would be able to get the time that it takes to uh, complete one cycle, right? So then we can say, well, look, uh, that's 1 divided by 50, and we get a, a time of 0 0.02 seconds. So that's the time it takes to complete one full cycle like that. So meaning half a cycle is going to be 0 0.01, another half a cycle 0 0.01. Now the time t, can you see that? It's after how many cycles? Okay, it's one cycle and half a cycle. So that's going to be 0 0.02 plus 0 0.01 so it means that time t is actually 0 0.03 seconds i hope that makes sense for everyone right so uh, the next question they say the generator is now connected to an appliance uh, with a resistance of 100 ohms right they say calculate the energy dissipated when the appliance is in operation for one minute okay so Let's first of all uh, find out, uh, you know, the, let's get a power rating, okay? So in this case, we know that uh, the maximum voltage is 311, but what do we need to use? We, we need a RMS voltage to calculate the, uh, you know, the, the, the average power. So we will say this is Vmax divided by square root of 2. So that's 311 divided by root 2. And uh, we get a value of about, uh, so that's approximately 320 volts. Okay, so that's the value that we get there. Okay. Um, now, we want to find out the power, the average power. What do we have? We've got the voltage. And we've got the resistance that was given there. So I'm going to say it's VRMS squared divided by the resistance. Remember, you're given these formulas. All you need to choose uh, to do is choose between the three. I chose this one because we've got VRMS now and we are given the resistance. So we're going to say this is going to be 320 squared, by the way, divided by the resistance, which is 100. Okay, so um, what does that give us? Okay, so we're going to say 320 squared uh, divided by 100, and we get a value of 1024. Now remember, that is just the power, okay? Uh, so that's 1024 watts. But remember, they wanted to calculate, they wanted us to get the energy. So how do we relate energy and power? Remember, power is energy dissipated divided by time. Okay, power is the rate at which uh, work is done. Okay, so we've got the power 1024. We're looking for the energy. And they've given us the time they said in one minute. But remember that when we use energy, it must always be in seconds. So that means it's going to be 60 seconds. Okay, so we can multiply that. We can cross multiply uh, by 60. Okay. And we get a value, uh, an energy value of 61,440 uh, joules of energy. All right. And that is essentially our final answer. Okay, so um, yeah, that's that's how that we're done with this question. Hey, yeah, flat out in ten minutes, <laughs> we're literally done. Okay, and um, yeah, so if you you've got any challenges in this section, please just go back to the videos that we had already produced 
on the similar uh, on on the same section and you know just have a look at them okay we've got an entire playlist and past exam questions that we've done on the same section um, yeah and if you haven't subscribed please just uh, you know add to our numbers we're trying to reach that uh, 20k mark and we are going to do so uh, uh, you know not too long from now and thank you so much for joining us and i'll see you guys next time sharp sharp